guys, it's Jessie. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another reading vlog. So today we have a super exciting one. I love doing my kind of bigger reading vlog reading projects and I also love doing anything Goodreads Awards related. I think we can tell by now I'm obsessed. I don't know why I find it so satisfying just to see what was the most popular stuff and how my opinions align with that of like the general Goodreads audience. So as you can tell by the title, today we are going to be reading the best romance books of 2022 according to Goodreads. So I did a video a couple of months ago reading the 10 best mystery thrillers according to the Goodreads Choice Awards as of last year and that was so much fun. I had a great time reading all those books and I um, find it super fun to compare my opinions to others. And yeah, I really wanted to do this again with romances. So in that video, I just read the top 10, the books that made it to the final round. This one's gonna be a little bit different because last year I was in my romance era. I was very much a romance TikTok book talk girly. So, I mean, there's still part of me that is that, but I feel like this year I'm definitely a bit more diverse in my reading. So I have already read a chunk of these, especially in the top 10. I have read the top six already as well as another one in the top 10 as well. So I've read seven of the top 10 basically, which would then probably make for a really boring video if I was only then reading three, if that makes sense, three books for the full video. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to try and read the top 20. So every book that was nominated, bar certain ones, certain ones are being excluded for certain reasons. I will get onto that um, later, but I'm gonna basically try and read as many as possible. So it's not gonna be like a bang on like one week challenge, but I'm not gonna let this drag on too long because I feel like with my mystery thriller video it took me like three months in total to read all the books especially because I was trying to fit other videos in between I am gonna see how many I can get through I think this will be a fun little challenge um but yeah so first of all let's talk through the books so I will put on the screen all of the books in order of um how they ranked and you can see here I will exclude some of them so I will tick off the ones I've read that is Book Lovers by Emily Henry Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover It Starts With Us also by Colleen Hoover Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood, Every Summer After by Carly Fortune, Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score, and Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher. So those have already all been read and um, I'll talk about my opinions on them in a second but I am not going to be having every book in this list kind of eligible. I am going to firstly exclude sequels because I do like to read even companion novels and stuff in order so if I haven't read the first one I'm going to exclude it. I have read the first in the the Hook, Line and Sinker duology so that will be included and as well as the American Roommate Experiment but I will be excluding Electric Idol by Katie Roberts I believe that is a sequel to Neon Gods and The Kiss Curse which is the sequel to the X-Hex so those will be excluded so then I'm also going to do a tiny little exclusion of Delilah Green Doesn't Care just because I don't have access to that one and also potentially The Bodyguard I can access it on Scribd on my phone and um, the like physical ebook um but I don't really like reading on my phone of the book Books left we have Twisted Hate, Hook, Line and Sinker, Part of Your World, The American Roommate Experiment, Funny You Should Ask, Thank You For Listening, Dating Dr. Dill and The Wedding Crasher. So that's nine books like I don't think um, it's awful that I'm excluding some of them considering that it's still a lot of books to try and read. So my priority is going to be the ones I own physically. So the ones I have are Hook, Line and Sinker by Tessa Bailey, Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, Funny You Should Ask by Lisa Sussman and Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. So the ones I have the audiobook for are Twisted Hate, which I also can access on my Kindle, The American Roommate Experiment, which I have access to right now. Thank you for listening and The Wedding Crusher. So that should be fun. I'm gonna create a whole new little uh, diagram that I'll put on the screen now, little graphic, so you can see the uh, ones that are gonna be included and the ones that are gonna be working with. So I am going to rank so far of the ones I've read my opinions on them. In first place, when I voted for these, I did actually vote for Reminders of Him, but I think looking back, that isn't actually my favorite. So in first place, I'm gonna put Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood, which I gave five stars. Then Reminders of Him, which I also gave five stars. And then It Starts With Us by Colin Huber, which was also five stars then I'm going to put Every Summer After by Carly Fortune which I gave four stars then Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher which I also gave four stars then Book Lovers by Emery Henry which I gave three stars I was so sad about that one Emery Henry is one of my favorite authors but that's my least favorite from her and then finally I'm going to put Things We Never Got Over which I gave one star I did not like so that is where we are sitting now for the books that I have read
read and then obviously I will slot in each book where I think it deserves to go after I have read it so yeah I think we are going to kick off this video with Twisted Hate I have access to that audiobook and I have started listening to it when I got ready today and I'll probably listen to it further on throughout the day so I will give you a little update when I'm maybe about halfway through and let you know my thoughts so yeah we'll kick off with that one by audiobook and then I think after that I will pick up the physical book of Hook, Line and Sinker so yeah super excited for this video really hope you guys do enjoy it so yeah let's just get straight into it okay so i am 56 percent through the audiobook to twisted hate i've got three hours 14 minutes left on the uh two time speed so not too too long i should probably finish it tomorrow maybe i'm gonna guess but mm, okay so i didn't like the first two i like this one more but i don't like it still i just find it cringy i think it's anna huang's writing i just don't like unfortunately um i mean i am probably going to read the last one in this series just because then i can have completed the whole series um and i do think that's the one i have the most chance of liking but yeah i just think after this i'm not going to pick up any more anna huang books it's just not for me we are following josh and jules who is Ava's from the first book's brother and best friend and they hate each other and then they start like a friends with benefits thing basically um so yeah it's not good in my opinion I don't love it but we're gonna continue on I prefer it to things we never got over at least like it's not as boring as that one and it's not as cringy as that one so it won't be our worst I will be very surprised if we find one worse than things we never got over because I absolutely hated that one I gave it one star um, but I feel like this might be like a 2.25 maybe I don't know I'm not loving it I am not loving it um but we're gonna power on through and we're gonna try and get through it okay so I'm now 82% of the way through Twisted Hate and the compliments I was giving it about being better than the others I take back because the third act conflict for me Firstly, so easily resolvable, like it wasn't a secret that needed to be kept. It definitely could have been avoided so, so easily. And the fallout from it has really, really rubbed me the wrong way. The way a certain character is behaving, I just feel like is so unjustified, so just like mean and horrible to the point where I'm not rooting for this couple anymore because I just don't think that that behavior can be forgiven. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah, it was just very, very harsh and really just did not sit right with me at all. So I think this is also gonna be a two star um just yeah really was not feeling it from that little conflict thing i feel like i was potentially going to give it like a 2.5 before and now it is a two star i really really just do not like it and the writing is just so cringy and the sex scenes are awful like i cannot get through them they are so cringy and just like just a bit over the top i think so yeah i really just am not feeling the vibe i don't think anna huang's the author for me as i've said before um but unfortunately i did have to read this one for this video so yeah probably gonna sit around a two star i'm 82 percent of the way through so i don't think i've got very much left at all yeah i've literally got an hour and two minutes left so i'll definitely finish that off today but yeah just very disappointing to be honest but again i didn't have high expectations so can i really be disappointed <laughs> hey guys i have some updates for you i've got quite a few updates actually i'm on the floor because i needed to get out of my bed i've been sitting um at my laptop in my bed all day and i feel like i should go a bit insane if i stay in the same place so i'm lying on the floor and we're going to be reading on the floor instead so you may notice different book so i did finish twisted hate i finished it yesterday i finished it all via audiobook i did have the kindle unlimited version but i was just going to listen to it via audiobook i gave it a 2.25 in the end i just didn't love it like i think i spoke to you guys um towards the end where i just think like certain things were said that were just horrible um like from one of the main characters to the other and the conflict just seemed like it could be so easily resolved if it was just spoken about honestly um and the truth was told um but you know what like it's whatever so yeah i am done with that one and yeah i mean to be completely honest i didn't have super high expectations because i don't think um the author's writings for me unfortunately but yeah that would probably sit just above things we never got over but um below all the others so now we'll move that out of the way we'll move on and moving on to another book one that i was probably reasonably most excited for which is hook line and sinker by tessa bailey <laughs> So I have read three Tess Bailey novels in the past. I read Fix Her Up and Love Horror Loser and I hated both of them with a passion. Um, and then I read um, It Happened One Summer and I really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars. So um, because this was in the same series, I had reasonably medium expectations. And overall, I am currently like pretty much bang on halfway through. I'm on page um, 194 
out of like 385 so i think we're slightly over halfway through if my math's right i'm not sure but i'm enjoying it i've read about 50 pages of this physically and the rest of it via audiobook and i mainly consume the other one via audiobook too i think the audio book narrators are pretty good and i am enjoying it i don't like it as much as the first one um i think like a decent amount less we're following fox and hannah which is the sister and best friend of the characters in the first book and um hannah is on a movie set that is filming in fox's like little hometown so they're also living together and like there's kind of like a rule that they can't sleep with each other even though fox has like got a bit of a reputation because like obviously it would be complicated for like things with uh brendan and piper the sister and the best friend so yeah i feel like the main conflict of this book seems a bit silly like i don't know whether it's just me i don't know whether i'm being really closed-minded but i feel like fox having the like notion of like i've never had a female friend before all women want me for is sex so like i have no idea how to act around this woman who just wants to be my friend seems a bit ridiculous to me because like you can have friendships with women they're very much similar to friendships with men like if they're completely platonic there's no difference obviously they're interested in each other but like i just feel like some of the things he's saying is a little bit ridiculous um and just i don't know it just seems a little bit contrived i think and a little bit um over exaggerated in terms of like the plot line because i feel like i don't know whether that could carry for the whole book um but overall like it's cute i do like the setting um but yeah i just definitely don't like them as much as brendan and piper i do really like hannah as a protagonist um i think she's really nice but um just don't like fox as much as the as brendan um unfortunately so at the moment it's sitting around a three star for me which is a little bit disappointing but um i am probably going to finish it tonight maybe i'm not too sure but i will let you know obviously when i am done with it and yeah unfortunately this one i don't think is going to be as much of a hit as the others but um yeah i'm excited to um see where the story goes so yeah that is my little update okay so i have a little update i ended up finishing hook line and sinker yesterday and i did enjoy it overall i gave it a three stars i think i don't know how to talk about this one i just do think test is probably not for me i think most likely it happened when someone was a fluke because it's the only one of hers that i have enjoyed um unfortunately in this one i found fox's character arc a bit unbelievable and a little bit frustrating the way it was kind of like oh i've been told that i'm gonna be like a heartbreaker my whole life um and then i had one bad experience with a girl i committed to and now i'm gonna only sleep with girls and never have any like friendship with them at all um I'm literally only gonna see girls as that from now on to then have like hannah come into his life and him be like i just don't know how to be friends with that girl like this is so confusing i don't understand this it's like being friends with a girl isn't different than being friends with a guy like being actually genuinely platonic friends if that's actually what was you know ever the girl is not difficult and it annoyed me a little bit i can't lie um but overall it was fine i gave it three stars the dirty talk again i can't like i can't deal with it i think at one point um he called her bum her buns like he massaged her buns um and i just had to take a minute for that one because i cannot deal with tessa bailey's smart scenes i think they're horrendous i'm sorry but they are like it's the the dirty talk and the like incessant amount of talking like they're talking all the time like you don't need to be that verbal do you know what i mean like not every action needs like three sentences of dialogue so unfortunately this was not a hit for me i'd probably put it below book lovers but above twisted hate on my little scale um i find her books very readable um, i didn't have any issues kind of getting through it even though it seems a bit longer it's not it's only about just over 300 pages because the end chunk is like a preview for it happened one summer which is the first book but yeah three stars um not for me unfortunately i don't think i'll pick up tessa bailey's other books but um i'm glad i finished off this duology though then i picked up the audiobook of the american roommate experiment um i was so very much into reading this i had it on my tbr wheel for july and i got 10 percent in and i just couldn't do it like i don't know what it was because arguably it was on the same level really as twisted hate hook line and sinker but just for some reason i was getting so annoyed by it and i wasn't enjoying it at all and like for me audiobooks aren't difficult to listen to you can put them on i put them on normally when i do my makeup in the morning that's like half an hour um like if i'm making thumbnails if i'm like doing a rough cut for a video like if i'm doing a task that like i don't need to be listening for normally i'll put an audiobook on and i did not want to listen to this at all i have no idea why but like I just couldn't do it so 
I'm gonna do DNF it, I'm sorry. This is gonna be a DNF for me, unfortunately. I just can't get into it. I don't know whether it's a permanent DNF. I might try it again in a couple months, but something about it, I just didn't love. I don't know why, because it's nothing crazy bad. It's like very much on the same level as I think, you know, Twisted Hate in terms of like generic romance vibes. For some reason, I just was not clicking with it at all. So I decided to um, get rid of my kind of like semi plan to work back in order from most to least vote. And I ended up actually starting the Wedding Crasher audiobook. <laughs> I wanted to see whether I just wasn't really gelling with the audiobooks and I need to take a break from that or whether it was specifically the American roommate experiment but I am loving The Wedding Crashes so much. Um, I am having a great time with it. I'm 17% of the way through and so far it's so cute. It's such a cute fun rom-com. I've like genuinely like laughed out loud and been like oh my god so cute and I think some of the parts are adorable. It's very very sweet. We're following um, Solange and Dean and basically Solange has seen um, Dean's fiance and another guy um, basically admitting their feelings like the day before or on the day of um, Dean's wedding. She interrupts it, um, tells him what happened and then basically that gets called off and circumstances arise where they have to fake date and they're just agreeing to fake date now and it's so cute. I think there's definitely some chemistry there um, between them. Like I can definitely feel it. Um, really good vibes and really excited for it so far. So I'm feeling good about my decision as well to DNF the American Roommate Experiment. I think it just wasn't for me, unfortunately. The thing is though, now I'm thinking about this whole little diagram that I've got of my favorites. Like I rated the top three five stars. I don't really rate romance books very highly anymore just because they're not my absolute favorite thing. They have to be very, very special to get five stars so I think it is probably likely that like if I read The Wedding Crasher and I gave it like a 4.25 realistically if I reread everything it would be above like Reminders of Him but I gave Reminders of Him five stars like a year and a half ago so I can't really weigh up which I would prefer like now very easily so I'm gonna have to obviously cross that bridge when I come to it but that's just a little thought I'm having now but yeah I'm gonna carry on with the audiobook of the wedding crasher and yeah I'm really enjoying it okay so I have a little bit of an update for you guys I was gonna update you like halfway through the wedding crasher but then I um, went to get my nails done yesterday and I pretty much listened to like 30 percent of it and then just finished it off when I was in town afterwards and overall I really really enjoyed this one this is probably one of my favorite romances I've read in a while i'd probably give it a four star um but overall i thought it was so fun i really really enjoyed it some of the parts made me like giggle out loud this is like i definitely would say like a proper rom-com there were a couple of cringy points i won't lie so i can't give it like a full five stars i'm gonna give it a four and i will say though in comparatively to like my ranking i probably would put it above it starts with us i did give it starts with us a five but that is more so just because of how much i liked it ends with us and stuff like that like that was a bit of a different situation but overall I do think that The Wedding Crasher is a better book so I'm probably going to put it below Reminds of Him but above um, It Starts With Us so this was definitely a super duper successful one. I'd really like to read more from Mia Sosa um, and I thought it was a really really cute like rom-com I thought both the main characters were very believable and very like cute and like their thought process all made sense and yeah overall I really really enjoyed it so that is a very strong recommendation for me if you are looking for a romance and I'm really glad that I found it through this video because I definitely wouldn't have picked it up otherwise probably especially now that I'm kind of veering away from romances I don't think it would have been really on my radar but overall I really really enjoyed it so obviously as you can tell we're not going in order anymore but the next book I think I'm going to pick up is Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma <laughs> really excited to start this one. I'm 40 pages in because I was listening to the audiobook when I got ready today. I've got um, like two hours on a train today so I should be able to get a good chunk through this. It's very readable and it's quite fun. So you've got Prem and Karina who basically get into a fake um, dating arrangement um, although they have like hooked up before before they kind of knew each other and Karina is trying to get money to buy her mum's house from her dad um, after her mum's died because her dad wants to retire and move somewhere else and Dr. Dill 
wants money to fund his medical practice that he's going to start and both their parents are saying you can get this certain amount of money when you're married i'm not sure why but i just want them to get married so yeah super excited obviously i'm only 40 pages in it's at the moment i mean it's so early days but it's probably sitting around like a high three maybe we'll see um how it goes to be honest hopefully we'll get a good chunk through it on the train and yeah i will catch up with you hopefully when i'm like 100 pages halfway through we'll see hey guys so i'm actually a decent chunk of the way through dating doctor still now i've been mixing it up between the audiobook and the physical book but i'm on page 152 now and i am definitely enjoying it i like this far through i didn't get tons and tons of reading done on the train but i'm probably going to try and get a good chunk through it tonight i think i've redownloaded the sims so i think i'm going to be pretty much playing that for a while and i might just have the audiobook on whilst i do that i think that'd be quite fun and yeah overall i think it's fine at the start i was finding um karina i was getting such bad secondhand embarrassment from her because i feel like their conflict seems a little bit like over dramatized like i don't know whether it's just me but I feel like the actual situation, it wasn't really that bad. And she like, is like going at him, calling him all these names. And I was like, okay, but like, they only knew each other for like one evening. So I'm kind of just feeling a bit like, why do you care so much? I don't know. Um, but overall now I'm definitely finding it a lot better. It's kind of like, I'd say, giving like dial A for aunties vibes with the kind of like cultural aspects, obviously two completely different cultures, but um, just like the way the kind of like um, families involved. Overall I am enjoying it. I feel like it is kind of like mid to high threes maybe it's definitely not quite as good as the wedding crash up which i do think i might raise the rating of because i think back on that one very fondly i really did enjoy it but like a solid 3.5 3.75 at the moment for me um so yeah i'm really excited to continue on with it i might just do a check-in at the end i might not do another like full midway book check-in because i've started editing this video and it's already very long and we've still got a good chunk of books left to read but yeah going to listen to it via audiobook now i believe i'm like 40% through it actually which is very exciting yeah I'm 44% through fingers crossed that we actually can finish it tonight that would be very handy okay so I just finished dating Dr. Dill um yesterday morning and to be honest I'm a little bit disappointed with it I do feel like the um last third was not very strong um the conflict the like midway conflict was literally so so pointless I'm gonna put up spoilers now in case you do want to read it this is more like romance spoilers rather than like plot spoilers I'd say so like if I knew this happened before I read the book I wouldn't be too surprised because it's a romance book so you know certain things are going to happen related to how they feel about each other but spoilers if you do care because to be fair I am quite funny with spoilers I do not want to know anything before I start a book most of the time basically she's talking to him near the end and she's like I need you to tell me that you love me and in his head he's like yes I love you and then out his mouth comes I can't tell you that and I'm just like how does that make sense like that makes no sense that seems so childish and ridiculous um so yeah that really kind of put me off and then the whole kind of final conflict just felt so ridiculous to me and all of them were so stupid and also like the final you know getting back together everything felt really rushed they were moving really quickly and overall i just didn't really enjoy it too much i also found the main character the main female character a bit cringy and um a bit annoying at times and overall i didn't love it so i believe i gave this a 2.75 i'll put it on the screen if i'm incorrect but that would put this probably below hook line and sinker which is surprising because i did think it was going to be above that and potentially vying with book lovers but yeah unfortunately it's going to be below hook line and sinker for me also he named his penis charlie i have no idea why anyone would ever write a book where the main character names his penis but you know they did it anyway and that's fine but that also takes up points like i can't deal with that it's so cringe so yeah unfortunately um i enjoyed like the family in this i thought the culture through it was so interesting to read about and really fun like the aunties were great i feel like similarly to double a for aunties i love the culture i love the characters i find it so interesting to read about but the actual story itself and the main protagonists are just too cringe for me so yeah unfortunately this one is a little bit of a flop for me but um i am excited to move on i think next i'm gonna read thank you for listening by julia whalen and yeah gonna crack on with that which i hopefully have higher hopes for hey guys so before we get into the next book i thought now would be a good chance to chat to you just quickly about all of the books that i have already read before starting this video so i think i'll go through these in order of least to most liked maybe um i do also have i think i've logged reading all of these and i believe that a couple of them are in like individual reading blogs as well so pretty easy for you guys to see i'll put um links in the description because i think i will have run out of card space um to link all 
all of these videos but I will link um, after the books all of the videos in the description as well where I talk about these books if you want to see kind of my live reactions and or my um, specific thoughts at the time. I'm going to pull up my Goodreads because I don't think I can remember everything but we will see hopefully I can. So yeah to start off with things I've got over I read this on the Kindle and I hated it. This is probably I think this I think I included this in my worst books of 2021 video. I really did not enjoy this one. Um, my issue with it I think is this book kind of made me realise I don't like grumpy sunshine if the guy is rude. So I didn't actually leave this a specific review but I gave it one star on Goodreads. I think my issue with this is that Knox I felt was just incredibly rude towards Naomi. It wasn't just a grumpy sunshine, it was like a mean man and a girl who doesn't respect herself enough to um, not put up with that treatment. That may be a little bit too harsh, like obviously she has self-respect and stuff, but I think like he's not like manipulative in any way. It's just like, he's just cruel to her and she like is obsessed with him from what I remember. It was way too long, like incredibly too long. I found it boring. I also think in 2022, are we really gonna be doing a evil twin trope? But um, that's very harsh for me. I just, the thing is, I know a load of people love this and I know a load of people love the full series. It's just not for me. I just really, really, really couldn't get over the fact that I did not like the main male love interest at all and um, it just felt a bit too long for me personally um, but that's kind of all I'm going to say on that. I just read this in a 24 hour readathon I believe. Then we have Book Lovers which was such a disappointment for me because I love Emily Henry. Every other one of her books I've given at least a four stars. Happy Place is currently my favourite book of the year so far so um, luckily for me this was just a fluke. I would love to maybe give it a reread because I do think that potentially after loving Happy Place so much I could potentially enjoy this more. I did a dedicated reading vlog to this when it came out because I was so excited for it. My issue with this is just that I did find it a little bit boring. I was expecting to not be able to put it down and I kind of found myself struggling to get through it just because I had like given myself like a couple days to read this because I thought I was going to devour it and I was yeah like kind of forcing myself to read it. I really didn't feel the chemistry between Charlie and Nora. I don't know if I was again just in a weird place when I read this because I love Emily Henry's other books so much but yeah I just didn't feel the connection between between them and I found it a little bit boring but thinking back on it like I feel fondly towards the book which is so weird so I really think I do need to give it a reread um but I gave it three stars um and I feel like that stands based on my recollection of it but I definitely think this is one that's up for a reread I'd love to read all of Emily Henry's books um but yeah I really think I kind of want to try this again maybe but yeah for me at the moment it's a three stars and yeah I did a dedicated reading vlog for just this. Then we have Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher which I think at the time I loved the Dreamland Billionaire series. I think I wanted to love it more than I actually loved it. I believe this is sitting at like a four stars on my Goodreads but this is the second book in the Dreamland's Billionaire series and I believe that I preferred it to the first one. I gave this a four star on Goodreads. Um, I think initially I'd given it like a 4.75 I've lowered it over time. I can't remember too much about this. I think I'd like to maybe give it another go. I'm not too sure. I can't remember quite how mean Declan was, but I really did like Iris in this and I liked her relationship with Cal. Um, and I think I was also kind of just like in like the romance vibes where everyone was like hyping up these books. And I think I potentially enjoyed them more in theory than I did actually like in my heart, if that doesn't sound too cringe. But like, I really don't really have any opinions on this now. I can't really remember anything that happens. But yeah, I really can't remember this actually. So take my four stars with a pinch of salt. If I reread it, it could be a five, it could be a two. So not too sure about that one. Then we have Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I read this in a 24 hour readathon again. And I actually really, really enjoyed this one. I do dislike the uh, conflict and the reason for the breakup. This is a then and now childhood friends to lovers. Um, but I gave this a 4.75. I believe the 0.75 uh, was unfortunately because of the reason for the breakup I really didn't agree with it oh it's just a four star on my goodreads so I'm um, not too sure but yeah um I love the summer vibes of this it makes me really want to read love and other words because I've heard this is a worse version of that um I really loved Sam in this I thought he was such a lovely um male love interest the female main character not in my good books but overall I, like I did really enjoy this book and I had such a fun time with it so this is definitely a solid recommendation from me then we have it starts with us by Colleen Hoover which I also did a reading blog for. I really did enjoy 
like It Ends With Us. I have like a love-hate relationship with Connie Hoover. Some of her books, I really enjoyed It Ends With Us, All Your Perfects, Verity, but then other books like the maybe Sunday series, stuff like that I hated. Um, but I think the reason why I gave this a five star was mainly just because I really enjoyed It Ends With Us. It was kind of nostalgic for me. Like It Ends With Us is like kind of the first book that I felt like a real proper like personal connection with. Like I read that very soon into my starting reading journey. And so the kind of nostalgia, seeing Lily in a relationship with Atlas finally, um, just like all of it kind of came together for me to give it a five stars, but it was more of a personal five star than a this book deserves five stars type of thing. Like I think it's a cash grab. I don't think it was needed. I think if you didn't enjoy It Ends With Us, you will not like this at all. This is for the It Ends With Us girlies and only them really, but I did like it. I can't lie. And I like that I have a special edition of It Ends With Us that matches this. I can't lie. That is my feelings on that one. I think you know, everyone talks so much about Connie Hoover, like any discussion I'm gonna have has already been said a thousand times over. And then we have my favorites um, of the books that I've read, which is A Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. I love to give this a reread. Sorry, I'm trying to show you the spread edges that I love. I also have a dedicated reading vlog for this one and I loved it. I gave it five stars. This wasn't quite as good, I think, as um, The Love Hypothesis or Love Theoretically. I think I'd put both of them above this, but I did really, really love this and I would love to reread all of Ali Hazelwood's books again. Um, she is one of my absolute favorite romance authors. I definitely think her longer form books um, I much, much, much prefer to her shorter ones. But yeah, this is such a cute book. I love um, Levi and B in this book. I also loved that we had a slight nod to her um, in Love Theoretically, as well as the cameo from Olive and Adam. But yeah, really, really enjoyed this one. Um, this is one I just could not put down. And I feel like that is kind of my personal judgment of how much I enjoyed the book is the put down ability for me. And I'm pretty sure I binged this in maybe two sittings. I got this the day it was released. I was so excited about it. So yeah, I really love this one. Just such a happy, lovely book. The ending goes a little bit haywire. Um, it like goes crazy, but like we just, we just go with it. We roll with the punches and I'm still giving it five stars. So yeah, um, those are my opinions on all of these books. As I mentioned, specific reading vlogs will be linked below and yeah let's get back into the books that I'm currently reading hey guys I'm currently halfway through thank you for listening I'm not sure when I last spoke to you I feel like it's been a while I've had to take a little break from this video to film other bits for videos you will have already seen and read other books but I am halfway through thank you for listening I'm listening to it via audio which I think makes sense for a book about audiobooks and audiobook narrators but I am enjoying it so far it's definitely kind of above my average romance I think like I'm enjoying it more than I would a normal average generic romance for me it's sitting maybe around a four I'm not a hundred percent set on that I like it more than book lovers less than the wedding crasher obviously that's not set yet we're basically following Swanee who is an audio book narrator and she is doing one final romance book for this author that has died that requested her specifically and she is narrating it alongside um, this other famous male uh, audiobook narrator and things just kind of like ensue from there I feel like I could tell you more about it but that is the kind of main plot and I feel like if I told you more than that then you could kind of guess the entire plot of the book maybe and like certain other things happen and even halfway through like I feel like I know kind of where it's going but if I were to tell you you know basic plot points it would have already taken us up to this point do you know what I mean like if I were to summarize it more it would kind of give away the entire plot of the book pretty much so yeah I can't really say much more but I am enjoying it and yeah I am probably gonna finish this off soon I don't think it will take me too long I'm getting through it quite quickly having a good time with it and yeah I'll catch up with you when I'm finished okay so I have finished thank you for listening and I did really enjoy it I do think maybe I'm I was kind of hoping I'd like it a little bit more um towards the end I was just trying, starting to get a little bit bored but overall I did think it was kind of better than the kind of average romance definitely above average for me personally I did enjoy it I thought there was definitely a very strong chemistry between the characters they felt very like grounded in reality which I feel like sometimes in romance books um it is missing the male main character was um super likable really I feel like he treated the um female lead very well and I could definitely see 
you know the compatibility there i think it also deals with some kind of deeper topics and um, because the main character is blind in one eye they kind of discuss that a bit like kind of identity as well it's a big discussion point so yeah overall i did really enjoy it i think i could give it a 3.75 so pretty good a pretty decent rating i can't remember where everything else is so i'll put in here where it ranks in comparison to the other books but yeah overall it was pretty good i did enjoy it it lent itself to being an audiobook because it was written by an audiobook narrator who then narrated it and also it was about audiobook narration certain people have like certain accents which i think made things more like easy to distinguish as well but yeah overall i did enjoy it so yeah that was a solid one and next i think i'm going to read part of your world which i do have physically which is always good i think because we've only got two books left i'm going to do kind of um start and end check-ins rather than the mid check-in maybe we'll see how i feel just because i know this video is getting super long i've already started editing it it's a very long one i don't know what to think about part of your world going into it obviously i haven't started it yet i've heard very good things but I'm just not sure because I mean the Reading Crash is the best book we've had so far but it's not kind of topped Love on the Brain. I don't think anything will to be honest because I don't really rate a lot of romance five stars anymore but I am still excited for both Part of Your World and Funny Shaft so yeah I guess I will catch up with you when I'm done with Part of Your World. Guys this is uh, embarrassing. <laughs> I guess so cry. <laughs> I actually can't think about it. I don't want to give spoilers. <laughs> but this is <laughs> This is the main guy. I just, he's just so sweet. <laughs> and I just want everything to go well for him. <laughs> I can't think about it too much because it just makes me sob. <laughs> oh my god. I'm giving it five stars. I have to. Ow. I wish I'd checked him halfway through, like, uh, five stars, five stars, five stars. I can't believe I sobbed multiple times over this book and this man. Five stars. Okay, so I actually finished Part of Your World and I didn't use my makeup for today, so I thought I might as well chat to you guys at the same time. But, oh my God, I cannot believe this was literally the one book, like the first book that I didn't do a midway update for because this might be one of the best romance books I've ever read. Oh my god, I'm literally obsessed with it. You guys saw, obviously, the clip of me um, crying. I cried hysterically. This is the first time in ages I've actually cried at a book. I was inconsolable, like sobbing, and nothing sad even happened. It was just that I was so obsessed with the male main character that wanted absolutely everything that could possibly go right go right for him like i wanted nothing bad to happen to him and there was one point where he was just like upset and i was just so sad for him and like i never normally get that attached to characters but oh my god i love this it was so fun there was like a little kind of like magical quality to it like it was just such a beautiful book i feel like it speaks about so many issues like this is what i kind of wanted it ends with us to be like i think in terms of discussing leaving an abusive relationship i felt like it was so realistic the characters felt so real like obviously there were times i was like annoyed with them and the way that they'd acted and stuff but like it all made sense for like who the characters were um and oh my god i was just obsessed with it so i don't think i even told you the synopsis like i literally told you i was going to start it and then you just saw clips of me um sobbing it's basically following alexis who is a doctor kind of from a long line of doctors her family like owns a bunch of hospitals like they're super rich okay i'm editing this video now and realized that my sd card cut off before i realized but basically i was saying it follows alexis who is an er doctor kind of from like a long family of er doctors who are very famous they like own the hospitals so she is set to kind of like inherit and take over that kind of vibe of stuff basically her car breaks down in this small village where she meets daniel who's the mayor he's like 10 years younger than her but it's like very small village small town um like cute romance and they start a romance and it's kind of like very realistic about like how obviously their lives don't match up but they've just got like such great chemistry which you can kind of see in the book i felt like the chemistry was very real um but yeah it's basically their romance story and it just speaks about so many deeper topics and i just loved it yeah 
Okay, I ran out of space on my SD card. I can't remember what I was last saying, but yeah, literally loved the entirety of this book. I can't believe this is the one that I didn't like record any midway update for, but yeah, like I literally couldn't put it down. I binged the whole second half of this literally last night. Like I was obsessed with it. So yeah, absolutely love this one and definitely a top, top favorite for me. Um, next up we are starting Funny Should Ask. I've read like the first chapter, um, maybe a bit more. I've read a couple of chapters, I think, and I am enjoying it so far and definitely intrigued i think i don't think it's going to top part of your world i think that's pretty much impossible but i'm definitely interested in it um uh, i can't wait to you know give it a go so yeah um i'll catch up with you guys when i don't know whether i'll do a halfway update i mean um if it's like feeling like it could be part of your world vibes then i might but if not i will see you uh when we have finished the last book oh my god how exciting <laughs> I'm like halfway through, funny you should ask, maybe just under. I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed. I literally love it so much. This is like five star potential. Somehow I think I've managed to leave the two best books to the end. I had such low expectations for this. I've been putting it off so much and oh my God, I've just read all that in one sitting. I am obsessed. I would be a thousand percent staying up to read this if I didn't have such a busy day tomorrow. I actually have so much to do so I'm up at like half seven and it's 12 now and I just really do not have time to be super tired tomorrow. I look very tired already I can tell but oh my god I'm so obsessed with it. I'm just loving it so much and I can't believe I'm literally I was like 40 something percent through like so quickly. I'm obsessed. I'm literally obsessed. I love it so much. So yeah, I cannot wait to pick this back up tomorrow. I'm not sure when I will finish it, but definitely tomorrow. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so I finished Funny You Should Ask this morning and I loved it so much. I thought this was such a good read. It's got quite low ratings on Goodreads, which really did surprise me. It's like a 3.6 or something. I loved it. I don't know why. I love her then and now. I love her then and now. Like the way this was done as well, I just loved it. Like I loved it so much. I really struggle to put into words like when I really enjoy a book. I feel it's I feel like it's so much easier to talk about books that I didn't like. This was so good. I had such a fun time reading this. I read it in like two sittings. I had such a fun time with it. Um unfortunately it's a 4.75. I feel like my issue with it is that I wanted it to be longer. So I feel like you had kind of like a bit of a conflict and like stuff all happened in these last few pages. I would have loved it to be a bit padded out more. I feel like the scenes in his hometown definitely could have been padded out way more um, and the scenes with his family, there was actually only one. So I'd love to see a bit more of that. So yeah, the thing is for me, I'd rather it be longer, which is a testament to how much I did enjoy this. So yeah, 4.75, but I am gonna put it above Reminders of Him, which was initially a five star because I think I probably would bump that down to a four. So this slots in Below Love on the Brain and Above Reminders of Him. So to conclude, here is my final kind of little diagram of all of the books that I read for this video slash have read before. Obviously I didn't get around to reading every single book on the Goodreads um, list. I would love to maybe do that at some point. I might do this again but I think the trouble is some romances I adore and some I hate and these are all popular romances but things like Tessa Bailey, Anna Huang and Lucy Score, they're just not authors for me. I don't think I just don't like it, I don't gel with it, I don't enjoy their books. Um, so I would be a bit hesitant to do another full romance video like this or do one this year for the Goodreads Choice Awards um, before like the results are finalised um, and I'd potentially be a little bit more picky with it because I don't want to force myself to read books that I have a track record of not liking and plus it's also not fair for me like for the authors for me to like leave poor reviews on books that I know I'm probably not going to like so I might do this again maybe um, or pick specifically authors I haven't read from before maybe or something like that because we had some proper hits here I feel like Abby Jimenez, Elisa Sussman and Mia Sosa are all authors I've never read from before and I thought their books were absolutely excellent especially Abby Jimenez and Elisa Sussman. I've seen her newest book gets some mixed reviews but the rating's actually the same as this so maybe I would enjoy it and Abby Hunez part of your world it's just perfection isn't it it's just perfection I loved it so I cannot wait to um, read another one of her books I believe yours truly came out this year so that probably is in the Goodreads Choice Awards so I might do something like this maybe at the start of next year because I'm going to be doing mystery thriller like as it's happening um, and trying to read them all and vote and stuff and I won't have time to do two of those um, with two categories so we'll see um, how the results fall depending on what I will specifically do but um, yeah basically I think we had a super success doing this I really didn't think anything was going to top Ali Hazelwood for me or some of the Colleen Hoovers that I really did enjoy I really probably wouldn't have got around to a lot of these books for a while because um, I thought 
I wasn't really enjoying romance anymore. Um, but I'm so happy that I did this video because it's made me realise that I do really like romance. I do really like popular romance. It's just like certain little things that I don't enjoy. Like, I don't normally enjoy Grumpy Sunshine. I don't normally enjoy like an enemies to lovers that much. I prefer things like strangers to lovers or childhood friends to lovers or like, you know, second chance type of things more like that um, rather than like solid enemies. Um, but like, obviously there are exceptions to this. Um, so yeah, as I said before, this is my final ranking of all of the books that I read, obviously with the American Roommate Experiment DNF. I don't know why, I just really was not enjoying that at all and I probably won't come back to it to be honest. I think Elena Armas falls into the kind of Anna Huang, Lucy score um, genre of authors for me personally. It's just things that like, I'm not, it doesn't really hit for me. I will put up a little comparison on both sides, excluding the books I didn't read and haven't read. I will put up the Goodreads results list and then I'll put my list. So you can see how my results compare to those of the general Goodreads readership. But yeah, I had such a fun time doing this. I feel like this really reignited my love for romance, especially these last two books. I think these last two books being such hits and such unexpected hits for me was just so much fun. I, I'm just so happy that I read Funny Should Ask and Part of Your World. Like these two books are the major success stories out of this video for me. Obviously I love Ellie Hazelwood and The Wedding Crasher I did really enjoy too but like these are like two of my like favourite romance books now. Like I think they're really top top for me and I'm just like I'm just so happy like I love reading good books and yeah I'm just in such a good mood now I'm like more open to picking up other romances and yeah just feeling the good vibes I really hope you guys did enjoy this video this took me ages I cannot remember when I started filming this video but it was a long time ago I have another Goodreads video planned coming up hopefully next month but you know if it takes me this long who knows um but yeah I really love doing these types of videos with kind of like Goodreads stuff involved so yeah I'll have another one coming um probably next month and then I'll have the mystery thriller goodreads trying to read them all in the set amount of time type of thing that a few people do um so yeah super excited for both of those and yeah if you have any other like specific awards that are good for like um having like nominees that you think i might like or just other videos like this that you want to see do let me know but yeah i had such a great time doing this video i hope you did enjoy if you did don't forget to give it a like down below hit subscribe and turn on the bell to join our little club and make sure to turn on all notifications then you'll be notified every single time i post a new video if you're not watching one of my other videos there'll be two on the screen now to pick from as well as a load linked up in the cards from earlier so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye